Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be building the 1971 Volkswagen Beetle by AMT in this cool, colorful Coca-Cola scheme. I picked this one up at uh, Walmart uh, late last year when they had some scale models for sale at Walmart. It was a really good price. I couldn't pass it up. I love the Beetles. When I was a kid, we had one. It was kind of a light blue color. That car took us all over the place, uh, and it was just a lot of fun memories. I have never built a Volkswagen Beetle model kit before, so I'm looking forward to doing this. This should be a pretty straightforward build. I'm not sure how I'm going to do as far as the design and the paint scheme and all this. Most likely not going to do the whole 70s flower child thing. Uh, nothing against that, but it's just not my thing. So. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to come up with some sort of uh, paint scheme and I'm sure it'll look cool. Looks like we've got some options in this kit, so I'm interested to see what those are. Here's a look at the parts on the back. Not a whole lot of parts, but uh, should be pretty fun to build. All right, so before I get this cleaned up, just want to say if you're new to the channel and you like my videos, please hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, please visit my coffee page. It's kind of like Patreon, except a little different, but you can buy me a coffee or you can sign up for one of my three skill levels. Also, I recently designed a bunch of cool t-shirts and coffee mugs for scale model builders designed by a scale model builder. So head on over to my online store, the link is in the description, and check out some of my cool t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other accessories. Alright, so let me clean this stuff off the bench and we'll get this thing opened up and check out what's inside. Alright, let's get into the box and see what we have here. Okay, looks like we've got... Pretty nice looking chrome tree. Got some wheels, looks like some deep dish wheels there. Some cool little old style mags. Chrome tree actually looks pretty good. Oh, we've got kind of a custom grill. That might be fun to try to use. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, moving on. Okay, we, okay we've got a couple options for the clear parts. We've got some green Coke bottle kind of color. The clear glass also, uh, both colors look really good. There's some red parts here for the uh, tail lights. That's nice. Okay, we've got some nice tires here. Oh, we've got, uh, okay, so a couple different types. So we've got these skinny tires have the red sidewalls on them. That's cool. And then we've got some uh, wider, uh, cool looking tires on the back. All right, those are cool. We got metal axle. Don't want to lose that. All right, here's the body. All right, it's a cute little body. It looks like it's uh, pretty well molded. Not a lot of detail. Actually, let's go ahead and take this out. Okay. So we've got some panel lines here, some raised panel lines. Kind of a lot of flash there, but nothing that can't be cleaned up pretty easily. All right, that looks good. All right, here we have another bag of parts. Let's go ahead and open these up. Okay, this tree, we've got some uh, cool racing bucket seats. A dashboard with some uh, decent, decent detail on there. If you can see that, it's got some okay detail. We have our pedals. Looks like part of the exhaust, the front suspension, steering column, and some actual two wheels that are hard plastic, not uh, rubber. Not sure where we'll use those or if we will. Uh, over here we've got, looks like some exhaust, the rear hatch, and I think this might be this will probably go underneath so you can hinge the hatch maybe. I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out. And we've got what looks like a very long antenna. Cool. Okay, we have another set of... Okay, these are slicks. So that's nice. They give you some extra parts. That's great. Might use those. Let's cut this part open. 
Okay, here we've got our floor pan for the bug in our center uh, frame. Some shocks, looks like rear, rear axle maybe, fuel tank. Okay, here we've got, looks like some more exhaust, mufflers, looks like maybe a sway bar, not sure, and then the hood. So that's interesting. The hood has a lot of extra plastic around it. I wonder if that's so you can use that custom grill. Not sure I'll be using that, so we may have to trim that. We'll see what happens. Okay, next we have, okay, this comes with this little stand or something to put it on. Yeah, probably won't be using that. All right, here's our instructions. All right, we're going to start off by assembling the engine and our wheel tire options and then our frame, mount the engine to the frame and we'll do the interior a little bit and then the body. All right. And looks like we have some options there we're going over. Okay, and a roll bar. Oh, so if those big plastic tires are if you want to do the dune buggy, I guess. All right. And then we have our decals. Let's see what we have in store for decals here. Okay, well, we got some very colorful decals. Some license plates, assortment of things. I kind of like the 1971. Hmm, I might use those, not sure yet. The racing stripes, these retro colors are kind of cool. Have a Coke and a smile, why not? Okay, so these look like pretty good quality. We will see how they go on. I will let you know. All right, so this looks like it'll be a fun little build. I'm ready to get going on this, so let me clean everything off the desk here and we will get to the build. I'm cutting down my chrome tree into smaller pieces so I can fit them in the bath of cleaner that I use to remove the chrome. To remove the chrome from these parts, I use a product called Super Clean. It comes in a purple bottle and you can pick it up at pretty much any Walmart. The body mold on this kit is actually really nice. I only found a couple of mold lines in the body, so I'm highlighting them with a Sharpie. This way, as I sand down the mold lines, once the Sharpie marks are gone, I know the mold lines are also gone.
I decided that I wanted to leave this part of the engine chromed. So I'm removing it from the rest of the chrome tree before I remove the chrome from the other parts. You have to remember, when you're gluing parts together that are chrome plated, you have to sand or scrape off the chrome plating on the areas where you're going to apply the glue. The glue won't stick the chrome plated parts together. It has to have some bare plastic to bite into. Here I'm using my Molotov liquid chrome pen to touch up the areas where the yellow plastic is showing through from when I sanded off the chrome so I could glue the parts together. After letting these parts sit in the super clean overnight, I remove them from the solution. I'm using an old toothbrush to remove any loose pieces of chrome plating that are still on the parts. After I dry them, I'll rinse them off in some lukewarm water and then let them dry. For this build, I'm trying a new primer from Stylores. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but this new primer is called um, Metal. It has a really nice metal finish uh, after it dries. However, the surface is a little rougher than the normal, just standard gray primer. I'm using a sanding sponge to just lightly sand it and make it nice and smooth and prep for the main paint color.
For the main body color, I decided to go with Mission Models Paints MMP143 Pearl Starship White. I really like this color. It has a nice pearling effect. And I mixed it with about 40% Mission Models Gloss Clear to give it a little bit of a shine.
Here I'm using some Tamiya Clear Smoke Paint. I'm using this to tint the windshields. I'm going to go heavy on the rear section because I want the back window to look like it has a nice dark tint. I'm going over the wheels with Mission Models Chrome over Mission Models Gloss Black. You have to take your time on this. It takes a lot of very light coats of the chrome, allowing it to dry in between, so that it gives that a nice metal looking chrome finish. You just need to keep adding coats until you get the desired look that you want. with the completed 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle by AMT. This may be called the Super Beetle, but it is not a super kit. I'll get into that in a minute. First off, it's done. I kind of was expecting a lot more out of this kit, I think, and the, the issues are there with this kit. It is an older kit. So this is the 2022 release by AMT, round two models. And this is a repop of an older kit. I'm not sure exactly when the original one was popped. And I know that in this version, according to Scalemates, it just says that they have new decals. So the previous version, I'm not sure what was changed or what was added, but yeah, here it is. <laughs> it was a quick build with some challenges. And overall, it looks good. I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. However, that being said, I was kind of hoping for more. And I kind of really wanted to do a little more with this kit, but it pretty much just fought me all the way. So I'm going to come out and say right now, this kit would be great if you're going to bash it. If you want the parts, if you want the body, the body is excellent, and some of the other pieces to it. However, if you just want to build it like this out of the box, yeah, it's going to be a little challenging. And for your beginner modeler, I'd say this is going to teach you a lot of patience and a lot of techniques that you're going to have to learn to make things fit. So some of the problems with this kit is the molds aren't that great and the, the parts need a lot of cleanup. The other challenge is with the instructions, they're not always very clear what parts go where and where exactly they mount to. So you kind of just have to guess. This was really challenging when you're doing the exhaust on the engine, installing the seats, the gas tank. You're just not 100% sure, so you're just guessing at a lot of it. Also, I did not like how the front wheel assembly goes together as far as how it connects to the, you know, on the axles where they go uh, in the front. The rear was actually pretty good, but the front did not like that at all. Also, the rims and tires, they don't fit really well. The 
rears are the wheel and the wheel and wheel hub assembly are wider than the actual tire. So on the inside, you can see, well, maybe you can't see on the camera, but the inside actually protrudes outside of the tire. So you've got to push the, the wheel of uh, the center of the mag in. And unfortunately, because it's not a great fit, if you push it a little too far before you glue it, it just pops right in past the bead of the tire. And you gotta start all over. The front wheels, same kind of thing. The tires are not wide enough for the wheel and the hub. So the rims don't seat really well into the tire and it just I just don't like the way it looks. So um, again, that's part of modeling. You just do it how you can. Um, you make them work and I did, I was able to make them work, but again, it could have, could be a lot better. So that's where this model is more for an advanced modeler who can deal with, you know, who already kind of knows how to get around those challenges and how to, you know, make things work. Where a newer, uh, more inexperienced modeler is just gonna put them together and it's gonna, they're gonna look like, wow, why does that look like that? My goodness. So yeah, definitely a kit for a more advanced modeler. So re real quick overview of the car. So. Um, I painted this in metallic starship gray. Uh, it's a mission models paint, and uh, I really like the color uh, that how it came out. It's got a little bit of a metallic in there. It's not quite silver. It's it's a little lighter than a normal silver maybe, but I really like how it came out. The wheels, I stripped all the chrome off all the parts with the exception of the fan shroud for the engine. But I redid, I used some Mission Models chrome paint to make the wheels look chrome again. Um, and uh, the engine is in its, it's how it is in the box, that, or how it is in the instructions. The instructions come with, you can build this as a dune buggy or a, a gasser or a streetcar. Um, however, none of which <laughs> I think really look the part, but that's just my opinion. Um, the engine does look pretty good. It has some good details. Um, it's a little finicky going together, especially if you want to place the exhaust like this. Um, it's not really clear in the instructions how uh, it should fit. Um, you just kind of got to wing it, and that's what I did. Um, it's just got a basic metal axle. The independent suspension here is kind of cool, uh, how they did that. The um, the overall look, it looks cool. Uh, the dash inside, I detailed the dash. You can't really see it in there because I tinted the windows also, but, which is fine because the dash, even though it comes with the dash, there is no indication in the instructions as to where the dashboard goes or how it's mounted. So I just kind of did my own thing and, and made it fit in there. Um, the only other disappointing thing really with the model, besides the lackluster instructions and the poor uh, mold quality of the parts, I would say is the rear hatch. The rear hatch will not close when you try to put it on the car. It, it will not close. Well, I'm gonna get it stuck now, but basically the alternator and or the generator and the fan belt stick out too far and will not allow the hood to go in the closed position. Now I could have modified it and moved the engine back a little bit maybe or shortened this up or you know, dug this out a little more and made it fit, but yeah, I just didn't want to put that much work into it, honestly. <laughs> um, but it does look cool. I'm kind of putting this as it's not really a street car. It's not really a dune buggy. It's not really, it's just a jalopy that some guys have thrown together and they just go out and have fun with it on the weekends. And that's the look and that that's how it came out. So I'm happy with that. Uh, as far as the decals, I didn't use any of the decals that came with the kit. Um, these stars are from my Peterbilt build. Uh, this Cherry Bomb sticker and this NGK sticker, they're from some uh, extra stickers I picked up along the way. I did use the red line tires for the front and just the normal black walls for the slicks in the back. I kind of like the way that looks, so I went with that. I did try to use a couple of different wheels and tire combinations from some parts that I have, and I just couldn't find anything that would really fit well. Um, without having to completely modify this kit. So I think um, if I ever did get another one of these, and I may because it's an inexpensive kit and it does have some good qualities, I would get this and I would just basically use the body and some of the running gear and a few of the parts 
and maybe make it a full-blown gasser. You know, put a V8 in the front, put a, put a stubby rear end in the back and some huge meats on it, tub it out maybe. I don't know, the possibilities are endless, but I went into this kit just wanting to build this, kind of this version of the VW Bug, and it just didn't happen, and that's okay. That's part of modeling. So all in all, uh, it was a fun build at times. <laughs> it was challenging at others, and that's okay. So let me know in the comments what you think about this build. Have you built this kit? What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them for me down in the comments. I try to respond to everyone as quick as I can. Before you go, if you could give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Don't forget to stop by my coffee page. And please remember to check out my cool scale model themed t-shirts designed by me, a scale modeler. Links to all of these are in the description, so please be sure to check them out. And as always, thanks for watching, be safe out there, and go build something.